I'm trying to find my way here. And I do believe going public will help. That video is breaking down the stigma surrounding hair loss and inspiring countless women across this country. So much so that for this week's edition of Who Won the Week, there is no need for a competition because we have a hands down winner. Massachusetts Congresswoman Ayanna Presley, uh, Sister Ayanna Presley. I just want to tell you, first of all, thank you so much for being here and thank you for winning the week. Thank you for the honor. Well, well, I have to tell you, I watched that video. Uh, first of all, it, it was hard for me not to ugly cry watching it. Um, and it was so inspiring. You talked about dealing with alopecia and it was so heroic. And here you are today in your full, beautiful self. Uh, tell, uh, tell me, how did you come to the decision to go public with this? What was a very personal struggle? Well, here's the thing, Joy. I was uh, suffering in silence and felt really um, shackled by the silence and the accompanying shame and isolation. And I felt firmly that in order for me to lead authentically, that I would need to be transparent. But also, I knew that I would owe people an explanation, not only because Senegalese twists, a protective hairstyle and braids, had become a conflated part of my personal identity and my political brand. Um, but because as a woman and a woman in politics, and certainly as a black woman, everything is political. Um, this is not shocking. I mean, I've introduced legislation to guard against the fact that black girls are pushed out of the classroom for how they wear their hair. I have colleagues who have been pressured by supporters and donors alike not to allow their hair to go gray. Uh, colleagues mm -hmm. who have been told um, that they should straighten their hair and not wear it curly. Um, and so uh, hair is political. And uh, so far as who won the week, uh, it's the millions of those in this country that are living daily with the trauma and the stigma of hair loss, navigating the world uh, bald, which challenges conventional norms uh, and societal standards of, of what is beautiful or what is yeah. handsome. This is a transcendent issue. So, so far as who won the week, um, I wanna just uh, give a shout out to uh, Bald Nation, uh, my fellow alopecians. Uh, this is an autoimmune skin disease that is transcendent. Uh, I've been hearing from men and women and children uh, alike from throughout the country, and so they win the week. And I'm yeah. grateful that I have the platform to shine a light on this issue. Well, I have to tell you, I have a dear friend uh, and a family member who both have dealt with alopecia um, issues. So, you know, when you came forward with it, it was something you personally for me that was so moving. Um, but, you know, as you know, you know, I am a beneficiary of the Crown Act that has freed even people in my profession to be able to wear braids. And I hear from so many, uh, particularly young black women, even young black men who say that, you know, wearing our hair in its natural state is so important to them. It, it means something to them. And you as you said in the video, are somebody who was carrying that to Capitol Hill. Uh, and so for you to now embrace um, who you are now, um, as you said, as a, a proud uh, alopecia, a woman who has conquered that, it's this thing that we have about our hair as black women. It is heroic. And, you know, that's why that's why we wanted to have you here today. Well, you win the week every day for me, Joy. So, you know, we, we love uh, we love how you are. We love your crown. And, uh, and we thank you for taking up that space. But again, none of us is here uh, to simply occupy space. We're here to create it. And, yeah. uh, and I'm very humbled that we were able to do that uh, this week. You are very incredibly brave. And uh, I, I want to also talk about the other piece of what you are doing politically, because you have come forward as a supporter of Senator Elizabeth Warren and her run for president. And you're going to be out on the stump for her. Talk a little bit about that. Absolutely. I've been out on the stump for her. This is really just a, a continuation of what is a, a nearly decade long uh, close friendship and partnership and good. Um, Elizabeth is my friend. She is my senator. She is my partner. We have worked on uh, so many issues together and including um, so consumer protection for those who have uh, been victimized by um, for-profit colleges and universities participating in uh, predatory 
and deceptive business practices and marketing, uh, supporting surviving family members um, who have lost loved ones due to this public health crisis and epidemic that is gun violence. So my being a co-chair uh, for her campaign, uh, one of three historic women, uh, Deb Holland and Katie Porter, one, I think it's a testament to the Warren campaign um, that they leaned in and made that decision to have three freshman women as co-chairs. And I think that our co-chairship does speak to the thing that I love most about Elizabeth. Policy is my love language. And she has introduced uh, policy and plans that are about two things, power, and then intersectionality. None of us live in big checked boxes. We live in nuance and complexity and intersectionality. And you see this reflected in her racial justice policies. We see this in her LGBTQIA um, uh, platform and, and disability platform. And again, these aren't set asides. Um, these are um, policy proposals that are wholly integrated. So I've been to four states for Elizabeth. Um, I'm on my way to uh, Iowa uh, imminently as the caucuses approach, and I'm pleased to announce for the first time publicly that I'll also be making my way to South Carolina. And I am buoyed, I'm emboldened by the deep, diverse, uh, multicultural and multigenerational um, coalition that I see her building. Her ground game is strong. And that is how we take this White House back. It's by out organizing the other side. And it's by staying focused. Yeah. And, you know, and you, you, uh, it, you know, speak to this idea of intersectionality so beautifully and so brilliantly. But let me ask you a question that has kind of come up and it's a thing now we're talking about. Do you think it's important in and of itself for America to have a president who is a woman? And why? Why does that even matter? Yeah. Well, I mean, we all bring our own unique lived experiences um, as lawmakers uh, to the job every day. And gender is a big part of that. Um, we know that when we have a diversity of perspective, opinion and thought and lived experience around the table of policy, uh, in the corridors of power and indeed uh, at the highest office, the Oval Office, that you'll see that reflected in policies. You know, I know there are some that would argue that identity politics is ruining our country. Uh, that's not true. Um, hate and white supremacy are ruining our country not identity politics. There is power in the identity of a survivor. There's power in the identity of being a woman. There's power in the identity of being a black woman. There's power in the identity of being a person living uh, with a disability. Um, you know, I want someone that is going to be responsive. I want someone, people talk about Elizabeth being an extraordinary educator and professor, but she's a better student. And that's what this country deserves, is someone that will actively listen, lean in, and then respond with policy. And I've been in proximity to her for a decade. I've seen her, seen her do that in church basements, uh, on big stages and in gymnasiums. And I want a president that is going to bring their identity, but also actively lean into the identities of all those and make sure that we are responsive through our policies to ensure that everyone can heal and can thrive and we have a more equitable and just country. Well, um, Sister Ayanna Presley, Congresswoman Ayanna Presley, first of all, you look like a gorgeous Wakanda warrior. Uh, and so you are beautiful and you are you are making it fabulous. You look great. Congratulations. Thank you. And also, thank you for always thank encouraging you. black girls to vote, because I know black girls vote is something, a passion that we both share that organization. So thank you for the all that you do. Thank you, Joy. See you soon. Thank you.